much beloved as Ratty from Wind in the Willows, the water vole also has the dubious honour of being Britain's fastest declining mammal. It's also one of the Mendip Hills National Landscape's champion species. These are a small select suite of eight key species which thrive in quality habitats. These canaries in a coal mine are a good measure of environmental conditions and help by both driving conservation initiatives and raising awareness of the habitats in which they live. Semi-aquatic by nature, Britain's largest vole can be confused with a slightly less welcome brown rat, but has a rounded muzzle, smaller ears and a relatively short and hairy tail. Excellent swimmers, water voles are very buoyant, with a large portion of both their head and body out of the water, and they tend to make a characteristic V-shaped wake. Evidence of the presence of water voles can also be found by looking for bankside burrows, droppings and food leftovers. Tim Hazeldon of the Mendip Hills Ranger Team is working to assess the distribution of the water vole across the Mendip Hills. The water voles, they're not massively fussy really, and as long as they've got water um, and some really lush vegetation, that sort of area in a bit of a bank and an area of water to plop into, uh, that's really what they, what they need to, to thrive. Water voles are mainly vegetarian, so they can eat up to 227 different species of plants so it's a, it's a whole variety of different plants. In the winter time they'll eat things like rhizomes and roots, anything they can get their hands on really. Mainly on the whole they're a herbivorous, they'll just stick to, stick to nice lush plants. Waterfowls are most active during the spring and summer. They won't hibernate but they'll become a little bit less active during the winter time so they'll, they'll find grass during the summer and they'll bring that into their burrows and sort of turn that into hay for the winter time and then they'll, they'll pop out here and there and eat those roots and rhizomes as well. The water voles declined by about 95% over the last few decades. Um, mainly it's because of the release of American mink into the wild, so this non-native invasive semi-aquatic mammal. Population of American minks exploded in the 80s and the 90s, and that coincides with the massive decline in water vole numbers. Now that 95% decline has meant we've roughly got about 120,000 individuals, that population across the UK, and that's about a quarter of the human population of Bristol. So it's really not a lot at all now. One American mink female can wipe out a whole colony of water voles within a few days. And you know, if you had stoat or other terrestrial predators, they wouldn't be able to get into those burrows all the way in where, they're, where the water logged. So it's a real problem. Other factors for the decline are um, poor bankside management. So dredging um, along, I know we, we need to in some areas, but just the way it's done, if, if it's pulling back the sides of the bank, that completely destroys all their burrows uh, and drought. Droughts are a really big problem because there's no water then for them to jump into to escape their predators. Um, yeah, but flooding as well can wash out those burrows and, and especially, you know, flood and drown those young. Pollution as well along our watercourses. We, we've heard a lot about that recently and that is a really big factor. Another problem is, it, is if you've got cattle, particularly in a field as well, that poaching with their hooves of the bank can, can really damage those burrows as well. What we've got now is this issue where a lot of those populations have become extinct from those various threats and um, there's fragmentation of the habitat they can't move between. So where we have lost populations, we only really have you know, a handful of records now in the, the, the Mendip Hills and the setting of. We really need to look at how we connect up habitat so we can improve the bankside management, perhaps put in ponds, new wetlands on the, the floodplains as well. And probably most importantly as well is looking at our mink monitoring. And that process involves going out there, putting this mink raft out. So it's like a floating little raft that's tethered to the side of the bank. And inside there is a a little clay pad really that soaks up water and that's just a tracking device so mink are really curious they'll go through little tunnels and they'll go through that tunnel there and they'll leave their footprints behind so we can keep an eye on that every every week if we did find mink tracks there then you can you can then slip a live trap into there and, and trap them and you can control them that way and we'd only do that if it was a really well thought out strategic approach um, where water voles are really really under threat and if we can do that and they're not too far away they'll move back naturally and we can potentially even give them a helping hand by reintroductions if we get the conditions perfect for them.
We can all help by just looking out for signs on our daily walk, perhaps keep dogs away from, from the bank side as well to avoid disturbance quite so much. And I think just a joined up approach where we're all working together, where we're monitoring for mink, looking out for those, improving the habitat and trying to create and restore wetland that has been drained and, and damaged over the years, trying to create new wetland habitat for those water voles as stepping stones to, to move along and spread back out again. If we've got cattle looking at fencing off watercourses, leaving that buffer strip, will we'll protect that water vole habitat, but also help to, to, to slow water runoff and clean up the water too. So how can we ensure the Mendips become a stronghold for the charming and peaceable water vole once more? Attend a water vole monitoring workshop. Join the Somerset Mammal Group and canvas water authorities to clean up their act. It's just such a charismatic species that's been part of our culture over the years with wind in the willows and it, it, it's, it's a really key indicator species of a healthy habitat as well. Um, you know, you take water voles away, you haven't got that diversity of, of uh, plant species because they're not being mowed down by them as they eat them. Um, and also you've lost a really important food source for those um, those other, other predators, you know, like our, our otter or herons even, and stoats and, and weasels. So they're, they're vital as part of the ecosystem as well. But, you know, imagine a, a, a world without water voles. It's pretty sad, really. And they're um, you know, peace-loving herbivores, vegetarians. We should be we're looking after them.